what you want. Drink what you're able. If you're drinking with me, you'll be under the table. It's time for more drunk rankings. Uh, you'll notice the setting is a little different than usual. I'm house-sitting for my parents. I'm also recording myself drinking in my parents' house, which is not the best idea I've ever had, but here we are. So I just got done drunk tweeting the Leprechaun movies. Um, if you want to catch my drunk tweets, be sure to follow me at Matt underscore presents. I remembered to put it at the beginning of the video this time. <laughs> and to start us off, I've got more Jameson. Not to, uh, to show off this time, just, you know, because it's Irish. And the leprechaun's Irish. And I'm arguably Irish. My family's been in America since Jamestown. I, I had ancestors at Jamestown. I have ancestors who signed the Declaration of Independence. Um, tr true fact, like, three, four signatures below John Hancock. There's Benjamin Harrison, one of my ancestors. So it's kind of hard for me to say I'm even the least bit Irish when my family has been in America this long. I think even, like, my mom's side of the family has been in Texas since the revolution. So, I don't really know that I, I count as Irish. I think I'm just American at this point. Anyway, who wants to see if I can finish this four pack of Guinness before the video's over? I, uh, I was smart enough to pour myself one before I started recording. Is it weird that I use fast food cups for, this is a Wendy's cup, I use fast food cups for booze? It just feels like environmentally conscious to me. God, I love Guinness. I've had a copy of the Leprechaun Collection for a while now. Uh, I bought a DVD of it way back when Hastings was closing, but I think it was only a five-movie set. And then Walmart was selling a seven-movie Blu-ray pack, so I, I replaced the Leprechaun <laughs> Like, it took me so long to get to the Leprechaun movies, I replaced the collection I had in the time it took me to watch them. I had seen the first Leprechaun before, but I hadn't seen all of the others. I'm just now realizing I left my rankings in my notes, but I'm using my phone to record this. Maybe I can go off of memory. I sure as fuck remember the worst one. Let's see if I can't just... I can't just... So Leprechaun Origins is not actually a part of the main Leprechaun franchise. It is a reboot, um, which is not immediately obvious from the title. It sounds like it should be part of the original series and just like, like a prequel to the first Leprechaun movie. But no, it's it's a full reboot. Um, I, I suppose they probably wanted to make more after this? Like, call this one Leprechaun Origins, and then, you know, whatever comes next, we'll, we'll, we'll do sequels to the reboot. But, uh, this movie didn't do anything because it fucking sucks. This is in the running for the worst horror remake I have ever seen. And I haven't seen a lot of horror remakes, to be fair. But between, like, 2008 and 2012, there were, like, j just remakes of, like, any even remotely popular horror movie. And I try to avoid those as much as I can, because none of them are good. So I haven't seen a lot of horror remakes, but of the ones I've seen, this is possibly the worst. Save maybe for Rob Zombie's Halloween. I, I really fucking hated Rob Zombie's Halloween, but this movie also pissed me off a lot. And that's a hard thing to do. It's hard for a movie to piss me off, but this movie did it. For, for starters, it's not, it's not even really a remake. The only thing it has even slightly 
in common with the first Leprechaun movie is at the end of the movie, when the girl tries to kill the Leprechaun, she says a line from the first Leprechaun movie. She says, Fuck you, Lucky Charms. And when she said that, I audibly, to no one, like, I was alone in my apartment, but I still audibly went, Fuck you. Fuck you. Like, that line was bad in Leprechaun. I've always thought that was, like, one of the worst lines in any movie. Just because it's... First off, it's so fucking petty. The line was written as, Your luck just ran out. Which sounds like a great action line, one-liner to say right before you kill a Leprechaun. Like, ah, your luck just ran out, and it's like, oh, perfect, that's the perfect line to say. And then Lucky Charms wouldn't let them use the, le the, the, the Lucky Charms logo in the movie. So they changed the line just to be petty assholes to fuck you, Lucky Charms, which is a bad line. But for it to show up in this movie, it's like... Holy shit, you have not even tried to be part of the Leprechaun franchise. You have done nothing to adapt the original Leprechaun. The only thing you're gonna take from it is the worst line. Fuck you. Um, the Leprechaun in this movie is not even a Leprechaun. He's like a fucking, like, goblin thing. And... It's like, you don't understand the Leprechaun movies, do you? The thing with the Leprechaun is, like, he's a funny character. You know, this is a ho it's a horror comedy franchise, which is totally absent from Leprechaun Origins. It is not funny at all. But, like, the Leprechaun has this very distinct personality, and a lot of the humor comes from the fact that, you know, this... It's like, slasher villain, this, like, Freddy Krueger-type character. He's kind of just an irresponsible asshole who's, like, constantly making jokes at other people's expense. And in this movie, he doesn't even speak. And, and they cast, uh, WWE wrestler Hornswoggle, the, the famous dwarf wrestler, as the Leprechaun. And I thought, like, oh, it'll be funny to see Hornswoggle try to, like, you know, uh, make fun of these characters and, and do, like, the, the Warwick Davis bit. But no! He's just, like, this weird, snarling creature. And it's like, why even bother casting Hornswoggle? Just get, like, any fucking stunt person. It, it doesn't matter. The Leprechaun has no personality. He's just, like, a, a weird creature that goes around and kills people. So, it, it doesn't work as a Leprechaun adaptation, and it also doesn't stand on its own, because it's a really fucking boring horror movie. Like, this movie is, like, obnoxiously boring. It's, it's, it's so uncreative. There is not an ounce of creativity to this movie. It is so fucking boring. Th this is the worst movie I've had to talk about for Drunk Ranking. You know, like, uh, all of the Paranormal Activities movies, all of the Ernest movies, all of them are better than Leprechaun Origins. This movie sucks ass. And here's the thing, because it's not even a part of the Leprechaun franchise, I probably wouldn't have included it in this drunk ranking, except it's in this box set. Leprechaun Returns, a, a straight-up sequel to Leprechaun, is not in this box set, but Leprechaun Origins is. It's, it's also one of those box sets where it's like, oh, these are all, like, specifically designed discs just for the box set. And then they just put, like, the normal-ass Leprechaun Origins Blu-ray in there. Like, it's it's not special at all. They just 
they took this out of one of the Leprechaun Origins boxes and stuck it in this box set. But to be fair, how the fuck else were they gonna sell this movie? No one wants to watch this movie. Apparently, it's one of the lowest rated movies on Letterboxd, and you know what? Fair. I fucking hated it. I haven't even really said anything about, like, what happens in the movie, and that's because fucking nothing happens in the movie. It's, it's so predictable, it's so unoriginal, it's so boring. I have nothing to say. Fuck Leprechaun Origins. We're moving on. Leprechaun Back to the Hood. Um, frankly, I'm astounded anything was worse than this, because this is a pretty bad movie. But, you know, it's a pretty bad movie that entertained me at points, whereas all Leprechaun Origins managed to do was piss me off. So, to, to Leprechaun Back to the Hood's credit... It didn't piss me off. Uh, where to even begin with this fucking film? So, Leprechaun in the Hood was not a great movie. It was, it was really dumb, and it was really obviously, like, you know, white people trying to appeal to black people. But, like, it seemed like there was a genuine attempt with Leprechaun in the Hood. Leprechaun back to the hood, they don't even fucking try. It's, this, this is just the lamest shit. There's, there's a scene in this movie. I have to talk about this, like, if we're talking about back to the hood, this is the thing we have to talk about first. There is a scene in this movie where it, Two black people have a discussion about the use of the N-word versus saying ninja. Here I would like to acknowledge I put clips in the Ernest Drunk Ranking video, and then I put no clips in the Paranormal Activities Drunk Ranking video, and frankly it's because there's nothing in Paranormal Activities worth showing. It's just a boring franchise. But I will insert some clips here because holy shit you need to see this just to understand how fucking cringy it is. Bill with Clovers, ninja. Ninja? Nigga, did you, did you just call me a ninja? Hey, man, hey, you need to get out more, man. Don't nobody say nigga no more. Ninja. Yeah, hey, like, what up, ninja? Oh, ho, ho, look at them ninjas over there. <laughs> you need to stop smoking that shit, dumbass nigga. Honestly, I'm not, I'm not even offended because it's racist. I'm offended because it's a fucking horrible scene. Like, what are you talking about? This is... This is... What are you talking about, even? I don't know how to describe this. It's... It, it's just fucking cringe. That's, that's how I feel about this scene. I don't know how to describe it other than that. I'm drunk. I am... Very drunk. Um, this, of course, leads to a moment in the film where the leprechaun sh shows up. Ooh, the S's are hard when you're this drunk. This leads to a scene where the leprechaun shows up and is like, Sup, ninjas! And... I want to die. <laughs> uh, apart from that... There's just not that much going on. There are one or two moments where I'm like, okay, that's a little funny. Like, the leprechaun's legs are too short to drive a car. So he just takes a leg he severed earlier and uses that leg to drive the car. That's kind of funny. But quite frankly, th th there's, there's just not that much enjoyable about this movie. Not nearly enough to make up for its, like, cringiest moments. Because that's, that's the highlight of the cringy moments, but there's still a lot of cringe in this movie. <laughs> Honestly, it doesn't surprise me that Leprechaun Back to the Hood killed this franchise for over a decade. <laughs> I don't know, it didn't piss me off, 
the way Leprechaun Origins pissed me off. But it did make me cringe a whole lot. And that's probably, like, second worst. There's, there's like, pissing me off, and then there's being cringe. You know? It's, it's, it's barely a step above. I would not recommend Leprechaun Back to the Hood, so... Moving on, I guess? So, gun to my head, I have to watch either Leprechaun 3 or Leprechaun Returns again. I'm actually gonna have a really difficult time deciding, but I think I'd probably go with Leprechaun Returns. That said, this is a very close one. I could pick Leprechaun 3 over Leprechaun Returns on the right day, in the right mood. Uh, it, it, it's a hard call, Pooh. I'm gonna argue these two should probably be tied. Leprechaun Returns is barely etching out Leprechaun 3. It, like, y you could convince me I should put Leprechaun 3 over Leprechaun Returns, but in the moment, I think I'm going Leprechaun 3 over Leprechaun Returns. That said, it's kind of interesting that it only took three movies for this franchise to get to Leprechaun Goes to Vegas. Here's the thing about the Leprechaun franchise that I, I just need to say very early on. Uh, the first Leprechaun movie came out in the early 90s. I think it was 93 even, which is pretty fucking late for a slasher series. So the Leprechaun franchise kind of starts where most horror franchises, stuff like Friday the 13th or Nightmare on Elm Street, it kind of starts where those movies were kind of at like their third or fourth movie uh, in terms of like content. Like the point where they're still taking themselves a little seriously, but not that seriously. Like, there's a reason it took Leprechaun 4 movies to get to space as compared to Friday the 13th's 10 movies to get to space. And, and in a very similar vein, it took Friday the 13th 8 movies to get to Manhattan, but Leprechaun 3 movies to get to Vegas. And uh, they pretty much squeeze absolutely everything you expect out of Leprechaun Goes to Vegas from this movie. So in Leprechaun 3, if you have a piece of the Leprechaun's gold, you can make a wish, which is a power that only occurs in Leprechaun 3. So something we need to establish pretty early on is uh, the Leprechaun movies are consistently inconsistent. N none of the Leprechaun movies exist in the same continuity with any previous movies. So what powers the Leprechaun has change from movie to movie, and in this movie, if you have the gold coin, you can make a wish. So there's a character in this movie uh, who's actually, who's played by the girl from Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. They're like, oh, you were in Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2? Come be in Leprechaun 4! It's uh, Leprechaun 3! I can remember numbers. I'm not that drunk. Fuck, that. I'm, I'm done with my first Guinness. And we're only three movies in. Gonna go pour me into the Guinness! The, the lady from Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 is in this movie, and she is supposed to be this sort of, like, you know, past her prime, washed-up showgirl, I guess, but she's, she's too hot to pass for washed-up? I don't know how else to put it. She's too hot to pass for washed-up. I could look just as good, you know. Why don't you hire me? 20 years ago, Loretta, or should I say 20 pounds ago? I am not always going to look just like this pally. 
But then she, like, gets this leprechaun coin, and she wishes that she was, like, young and hot again. So you're like, but you're already pretty young and pretty hot. And, and then she makes the wish that she's, like, younger and hotter, and she looks the same. Like, nothing changes about her. This was bad casting. Like, she's, she's not, like, old enough to play Washed Up, and she's not young enough to play the younger, hotter version of herself. Like, either you needed to really add, like, layers and layers of makeup, or you needed to just cast two completely different people. Like, an old lady and then, like, a younger lady for the younger version of herself. It just, it, this is bad casting. It doesn't work. She wishes she's younger, and she looks the same. Of course, uh, this leads to a scene where the leprechaun, because, of course, if you make the wi a, a wish with the leprechaun gold, it has to, like, turn around and kill you, you know, sort of monkey's paw style. But, so, so, so this leads to a scene where the leprechaun uses her wish to make her have ridiculously huge boobs and a ridiculously huge ass to the point that her tits and ass explode. That's where this movie decides to go. Feels like rain. And, and despite that sounding kind of interesting, overall, it's a pretty dull movie. See, this is the point in the franchise where they're at their worst idea-wise. They haven't committed to being over-the-top ridiculous, but they also are, are past the point of being a serious horror franchise. I mean, this was never really a serious horror franchise, but they're, they're still taking themselves too seriously to be silly, but not seriously enough to be good. It is worth pointing out, I think, that at one point, the leprechaun is playing craps, and on one side of him is a beautiful woman, and on the other side of him is a beautiful man. And he's like, oh, come on, you guys gotta kiss the dice. And I'm like, hmm, are they trying to imply the leprechaun is bisexual? And there's a lot of stuff in this franchise that points to the leprechaun being bisexual. Honestly, the leprechaun is the horror icon I can uh, relate to the most, both because he's bisexual and also because he's a clear alcohol and drug addict. Yeah, this movie doesn't have that much going for it. It has a couple silly moments, but overall, I, I don't know that I would recommend it independent of just sitting down and watching the entire Leprechaun franchise. Moving along. Leprechaun Returns. A sci-fi channel original movie, I think. So, Leprechaun Returns is the first main series Leprechaun movie since Back to the Hood, which was like 2003, I think. Let me double check. Yeah, Leprechaun Back to the Hood was 2003. Leprechaun Returns was 2018. So it took them 15 years to come back to this franchise, uh, excluding Leprechaun Origins, which really shouldn't even count. Fuck that shit. And, unlike any of the other Leprechaun movies, this is the only one that has any sort of continuity because it is a direct follow-up to the first Leprechaun movie. So, this film feels like it is more respectful of the Leprechaun canon, 
And while I can kind of appreciate, like, the dedication to the source material, on the other hand, I, I kind of like it better when they just totally disregard all the other movies. Because it makes for a much funnier, much more unique film. And plus, it's like, it's, it's pretty consistent with its inconsistency. So, like, like, even the second movie totally retcons the Leprechaun's origins. So it's just like, yeah, man, who cares? We're just gonna... Every Leprechaun movie is just gonna do whatever they want. And this film's strict dedication to what happened in the first Leprechaun movie kinda sucks a lot of the fun out of it. On top of that, it seems like they're taking the Leprechaun franchise way too seriously with this movie, which is weird because this movie is directed by Stephen Katansky. I really hope I'm saying that correctly. Will you stop making noise while I'm recording? Holy shit. I don't have an ice maker back at my house, but my parents do. And it's making a lot of noise while I'm recording. This movie is directed by Stephen Katansky, who just put out Psycho Goreman, which is the best movie of 2021, and possibly the best movie ever made. So he knows how to make a funny horror movie. So it's weird that this movie takes itself so fucking seriously when the Leprechaun franchise is clearly supposed to be like a horror comedy franchise. There are a few funny moments in this movie, but overall it, it just takes itself way too seriously for the Leprechaun franchise. And in spite of its dedication to the lore of this franchise, it does still include new powers that didn't appear in previous movies. Like, uh, one of the characters comes back as a ghost. That hasn't happened in any of the Leprechaun movies, so it is consistent to the franchise's inconsistency. Um, Ozzy from the first movie shows up in this film, and he is the first person dead. Spoilers? Who cares about spoilers? Uh, Ozzy is the first one dead, and I am just not a fan of, oh, we're gonna bring back one character from the original movie and immediately kill them off. Although, he is the one character who gets to come back as a ghost in this movie. Uh, the main character of this movie is supposed to be Jennifer Aniston's daughter? Uh, they say Jennifer Aniston's character dies, that died like a year before this movie, um, and also sort of imply that she like went crazy after the first Leprechaun movie. Uh, th this, this chick talks about her mother so much. It's, it's ridiculous. Um, and it's even more ridiculous because her mother is the main character of the first Leprechaun movie. Also, Ozzy tells her she looks like someone he used to know, and then later implies the person he used to know was Jennifer Aniston. But this chick looks nothing like Jennifer Aniston. Like, not even a little bit like Jennifer Aniston. So I'm like, what are you talking about, Ozzy? This girl does not look like the person you knew. There are a few creative kills here and there. Also, frankly, I, I feel like I was a lot more lenient on this movie after having watched Leprechaun Origins, because I'm like, okay, you at least care about the Leprechaun franchise, so I'll, I'll give you a little bit of a pass for caring something Leprechaun Origins did not do. Truth be told, this is probably pretty close to what I would make tasked with adding a movie to the Leprechaun franchise. You know, unless I just decided to completely ignore 
every other previous movie, you know, the way every other previous movie did. I don't know, I think I could probably write a better Leprechaun movie than this, but if I was asked to make a direct follow-up to the 1993 film Leprechaun, this is probably about as good as you could do. I, I don't know that you could do that much better than this. This movie has, like, a weird environmentalist slant, and it's like, man, wh where are all the people, uh, like, like, these people complaining about, like, all these franchises going woke? Where are the people complaining about Leprechaun going woke? Come on, Leprechaun going woke? Ridiculous. This was not supposed to be an environmentalist franchise. Why are you adding politics to something I watched before I knew what politics were? I don't know, man. I don't I don't mind the environmentalist slant this movie tries to take. Honestly, it's a really interesting direction for the franchise to go. Warwick Davis does not return as the leprechaun. They they got some other guy to do it. And he's better than Hornswoggle, because he actually has a fucking personality. I think I would have preferred Warwick Davis. And to be fair, it seems like they offered the role to Warwick Davis, and he turned it down. So, fair enough. Um, this guy's fine. He's not Warwick Davis. I think Warwick Davis brought a lot to the character of the Leprechaun. And this guy, he's trying, he's good, but... If you don't take care of your body... <laughs> it won't take care of you. <laughs> mm, it's probably the best you could do without just bringing back Warwick Davis, but I would rather have had Warwick Davis. Yeah, Leprechaun Returns is... Fine. At the very least, I get the sense it's made by someone who cares about the Leprechaun franchise. But, uh, yeah, you, you, you could do better than this. Um, and frankly, the director has done better than this because he made Psycho Goreman, which is amazing and I love it. Uh, moving on. Yo, Jordan Peele, where is my Leprechaun in the Hood remake? I need Jordan Peele to remake Leprechaun in the Hood. This movie is... I don't know, I guess exactly what it says on the tin. It's... it's Leprechaun in the Hood! What... what else did you expect from this movie? So it's... it's Ice-T is this, like super famous rapper, but he's only super famous because he stole a flute from the leprechaun that hypnotizes people. One of the many new additions that just completely ignores the lore of the other movies. So he has uh, this magic flute um, that, that hypnotizes people, and that's why he's like, one of the most successful rappers ever, but he still chooses to live in, like, the hood he grew up in. Which, I mean, I, I guess some respect for that. Like, you know, a lot of these rappers, like, oh, yeah, repping the streets of poor community and then, you know, totally move out of it the second they're famous. So some respect to Ice-T's character in this movie, I guess. But, uh, it, it revolves around these three guys who straight up rob him. They're like, well, he's the biggest, uh, rapper around. Let's just rob him. And they, they end up stealing a lot of the leprechaun's gold and resurrecting the leprechaun. And they get, like, his hypnotic flute. Yeah, it's, it's pretty fucking ridiculous. It's also the point in the series where, like, Power Creep really starts to kick in. Because in this movie, the Leprechaun is so ridiculously overpowered. It's 
absurd to think that anyone has ever managed to stop him, let alone five separate times he has been stopped. Because in this movie, he can just, like, point at people and, like, take control of them, and he, like... He, he he makes a guy shoot himself in the movie. No, both. No. no. So it's like, why was he so power? Why hasn't he used this power before now? And the answer is because there's no consistency with these films. But uh, you know, what are you gonna do? Also, this movie gets really, really transphobic out of fucking nowhere. Like, the main characters are looking for a place to crash, and they end up crashing with, seemingly, a trans woman, and she is, just, she, she is not kindly depicted in this movie. Although, the leprechaun does have sex with her, which kind of supports my leprechaun is bisexual theory. I guess this is kind of a setup for the climax, where the two living main characters decide the way to get close to the leprechaun is dressing up as women, and then it turns into this weird white chicks prequel. And one thing that's probably worth mentioning, you can kind of tell who was behind this movie, because in this movie where nearly all of the characters are black, the leprechaun's posse of hot girls is entirely white girls. And it's like, damn, leprechaun in the hood, you, uh, <laughs> you, you, you really just... Only white girls are hot. Wow, okay. That's... Woof. Th th this movie was made in 1999. I know it's made in 1999, because at one point you can see a billboard for the Phantom Menace in the background. Just big old picture of fucking Jar Jar in this movie. So it's like... I don't know, I feel like you probably should have known better. But then again, sometimes I feel like people t t today don't know better. I, I, I don't know, I, I, I'll, I'll take the middle rule, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt on this one, but... Jesus Christ, that is just like... It's... Let's call it what it is. It's kind of racist. It's kind of racist that all of the hot chicks the leprechaun goes after are white chicks. Okay? That's kind of racist. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm not saying the producers of this movie are like horrible people or anything, but that... That's raising some eyebrows, you know? I don't know. Honestly, doing Leprechaun in the Hood is kinda raising some eyebrows. <laughs> you know, cause this is, this is not a franchise that is gonna stop and like, do that concept justice. This is not Candyman. This is not People Under the Stairs. This is not a film that's going to stop and, like, make any sort of political commentary. So really, they just shouldn't do Leprechaun in the Hood. That said, it's just kind of a hilariously bad idea that you're like, okay, I, I gotta see this. I gotta know how bad did they fuck this up. And the answer is pretty fucking bad. Yeah, uh, Leprechaun in the Hood. It's worth a few laughs, but it's not great. Oh, I should mention, Coolio shows up in this movie, and the main characters seem as confused by it as I did. Because they're just like, what the fuck, is that Coolio? 
And I was also there like, what the fuck? Is that Coolio? Why is Coolio in this movie? Yo, that's Coolio. I mean, I, I guess it makes more sense than him showing up in Batman and Robin, but still, what the fuck? I mean, Ice-T is one of the main characters, so why wouldn't Coolio be in this movie? I don't know. Uh, Leprechaun in the Hood. It's an odd one, for sure. Moving on. Uh, yeah, the first movie in the franchise is third place on this list. And, you know, it's like I was saying earlier, this movie feels like a franchise that is a couple movies in. Like, Leprechaun 1 would be, like, Friday the 13th 4 or something. To be fair, there is even an element of comedy to this movie. Like, it's clearly supposed to be a comedic franchise right from the start, but... It's not super comedic, like it is still taking itself a little bit seriously, which I'm not sure you can really do with the Leprechaun movies. So Leprechaun 1 stars Jennifer Aniston. <laughs> um, because, you know, fr horror franchises are just weird about getting really popular actors and actresses way before they become popular. This was like a year or two before she was on Friends. So this is like Jennifer Aniston's first major role. So, so props to them for getting Jennifer Aniston before anyone else. It's, uh, it's okay. It's, there, there's not a lot to talk about with this movie because it's not like at the point where the franchise was ridiculous, but it's also not super good either. Like, there's some fun moments in the movie, and I would not really discourage anyone from watching it. Like, if you're a fan of, of, horror movies and slasher movies like this, Leprechaun's fine. There's nothing bad about it. I enjoy it well enough. But at the same time, there's not that much to talk about. It, it hasn't completely gone off the rails. And also, because this is a franchise that has, you know, no reverence to consistency, uh, the stuff they set up in this movie is not something that's necessarily going to apply to every subsequent movie. They completely retcon the Leprechaun's origin in every single movie except Leprechaun Returns. So... Yeah, there's not that much important about this movie. It's fun. It's got its fun moments. Uh, I, I appreciate it for what it is. And, and I appreciate it for launching the Leprechaun franchise because, frankly, the Leprechaun franchise is a pretty fun franchise to sit through. Like, uh, I just before this, I did the Paranormal Activities movies. I will take any of the mainline Leprechaun movies over any of the Paranormal Activities movies, quite frankly. Um, the, the only one I think is worse than any Paranormal Activities movie is Leprechaun Origins, but that's not part of the main series, so we're not even gonna consider that. As far as the main series goes, way better than Paranormal Activity. You know, it's it's a silly slasher movie. If there's kind of a wink and a nod to the audience that, like, yeah, we get it. It's kind of silly to make a leprechaun the bad guy of this series. But at the same time, 
you know, it's enjoyable. I love Warwick Davis. Like, that that just has to be said. Warwick Davis as the Leprechaun, one of the greatest horror villains ever, honestly. Like, I, I think he stands toe-to-toe -to -toe with Freddy Krueger or Jason or Pinhead. He... He has a lot of personality. He is what makes a lot of these Leprechaun movies. He has so much personality. He is so fun to watch. I love Warwick Davis in these movies. Major props to Warwick Davis. Like, like he is as essential to the Leprechaun franchise as Robert England is to uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. I almost said Friday the 13th, because I am that fucking drunk. I don't know what else to say about Leprechaun. It's a super fun movie. I need to go get another Guinness. Damn, you know, actually, drinking two whole Guinnesses really makes you have to piss. I'm gonna be right back, and then we can talk about the last two Leprechaun movies. One piss later. Okay, I'm back. Leprechaun 2. This one takes place over Leprechaun 1 because it is trippy as fuck. Like, this is the point where the Leprechaun's supernatural powers get, like, really, really interesting. Like, a lot of this movie takes place in a cave that's supposed to be, like, the leprechaun's lair. It's, like, super disorienting, and if you go the wrong way, you'll end up back where you started, and... It's... it's... It's just a really interesting place to be, because it's so weird and so... surreal and, and hard to, to figure out what's going on. It's, it's the trippiest movie of the series, and I just really liked that. I really appreciate that this movie went weird places. Like, they, they took the first movie and they're like, okay, the Leprechaun has some, like, weird supernatural powers, and they made this movie and they were like, what if it was just, like, the craziest shit ever? And yeah, it, it's just like the craziest shit ever in this movie, which really works for the Leprechaun as a character, because he's sort of this, like, mischievous trickster, so it makes sense that, like, his lair would be this really weird, disorienting place that doesn't apply to, like, the, the laws of... of human understanding. It's, it's, it's a really interesting take on, like, the Leprechaun's powers and what he's capable of and, and the ways he tricks people. Because that's the thing, like, in, even in their, like, original Irish folklore, uh, the Leprechauns were supposed to be, like, tricky, mischievous characters who, who tricked you into doing something you didn't actually want to do. And that really comes through in this movie. It's, it's also the movie where I think the Leprechaun's personality shines through the most. Um, uh, maybe In the Hood kind of makes a good, a good display of his character. Because in, in the Hood is the first time he, like, tries weed, and then he becomes, like, really in the smoking weed in that movie. Uh, in, in Leprechaun 2 is when he's at his most drunk. So, you know, drunk, guy who gets high all the time. You see why I find the Leprechaun a very relatable horror villain. Maybe we should go now. Late. Have I mentioned that I want to go? He he gets in a, a drinking competition in this movie and kinda loses. 
He kind of loses the drinking competition. He wins enough to, like, walk it off, but he, he arguably loses the drinking competition. It's just, it's fun, it's weird, it gives the Leprechaun a lot of personality. It's pretty funny, honestly, for, for like a comedy franchise. I would say Leprechaun 2 is one of the funniest installments. Uh, like, like the point at which they're making real jokes and aren't just being totally fucking cringy. Yeah, I, I enjoyed Leprechaun 2 more than I did the first movie, but not quite as much as I enjoyed the best Leprechaun movie. Leprechaun in Space. I kind of wish this movie was Jason X. <laughs> I kind of, I wish the Friday the 13th franchise had gotten to be as weird and as unique and as, as out there as Leprechaun in Space. Because Leprechaun in Space is, frankly, just a, a really unique movie, a really original, creative movie. Like, they, they put it in space, which is obviously kind of a, like, Ha ha ha, we're not taking this franchise too seriously because we're sending the main character to space. Ha ha, that, that's the point at which your franchise is, is kind of like not taking itself seriously at all. But they're really creative with the shit that goes on in space. Like the main plot revolves around like this, this weird German scientist guy. Apparently he was one of the villains on Hogan's Heroes. Um, I, I learned that because, ooh, I, Lino, I think, chimed in on Twitter and informed me that he was, like, one of the villains on Hogan's Heroes. And you can tell because he's, like, this super eccentric German person. It's like, yeah, that seems like a Hogan's Heroes villain. Correction, he was never in Hogan's Heroes. He was on a British sitcom called Allo Allo, which was set during World War II. So he, he did play a Nazi on on that show. Um, it, it's a comedy series set in World War II. It's not remembered fondly from what I can tell. But it's just like, like at some point you find out he is, like, a head and, like, his arm. One of his arms. And the rest of him is, like, a robot. <laughs> and it's like, what the fuck is going on with this character? What the fuck is going on in this movie? It's so crazy. It's so silly. It's so funny. Uh, it, it's so creative. It's creative. It's a creative movie. I'm very drunk. I I really enjoyed Leprechaun in Space. Like it's it's a movie that just it, it says like fuck it. We don't care if this is like smart or good or well made. We just want to be like unique and we want to be funny while we're being unique. And it achieves that. It, it is unique, and it's also pretty funny because of just how bizarre it is. It's, just, it's a really funny movie, and I wish it was part of the Friday the 13th franchise because Jason is a character I care about a little more than the Leprechaun. I know I've been praising, like, how interesting he is and how... how well Warwick Davis does with the character, but he's kind of a joke character, and I think it would be a lot funnier to see, like, a serious killer, like Jason Voorhees, do, I I interact with, like, the absolute insanity of Leprechaun 4 in space. 
the villain turns himself into a fucking spider. Like, what the fuck? That's, that's a nostalgia critic joke. The nostalgia critic is like a mad scientist who turns into a spider. But that also happens in this movie. You think, you think the nostalgia critic is ever going to review Leprechaun 4? He should. He should review Leprechaun 4. But then again, he shouldn't. It's too good for him. Uh, Leprechaun 4 should be left to people who love and appreciate it because it is a brilliant movie. Yeah, man, I just, I love Leprechaun 4 in space. Um, I, I told Michael we could potentially do, like, a Hollow Victories episode on, like, Jason X versus Leprechaun 4 in space, but... Just between you and me, if, if that ever happens, which I'm not saying it will, it probably won't, but if that ever happens, Leprechaun 4 in space is winning hands down. I just, I really enjoyed this movie. And honestly, I enjoyed this franchise. It's a very funny, very silly franchise. Warwick Davis brings so much personality to the Leprechaun. And, like I said, it's a franchise that sort of starts where a lot of other franchises were getting sillier. So, from the get-go, it's kind of a silly series, and it, it just kind of rides the fact that it is a silly series. Really, like, disregarding... Leprechaun Origins and probably Leprechaun Returns, which take this franchise a little too seriously. Even at its worst, it is still a silly franchise that's kind of winking at the audience. It's like, haha, what if, like, a horror franchise did something real silly, like going back to the hood? What if there were two movies just set in the hood? I don't know. It's it's fun. It's silly. It's enjoyable. I had a good time. A except, except with Leprechaun Origins. Fuck Leprechaun Origins. So, as for upcoming drunk tweets, uh, I'm gonna drunk tweet Spiral from the Book of Saw. I'm gonna drunk tweet uh, Tough Guys Don't Dance. I had someone request this, so I, I went ahead and, like, got the Blu-ray of it. Got the, the brand new Vinegar Syndrome Blu-ray of Tough Guys Don't Dance, which I don't have because I left it at my apartment. I have a movie in mind for the third week, but if you want to recommend something, hit me up, uh, at Matt underscore presents. I get a lot of requests for, like, stuff to talk about on Matt's Funtime Weird Movie Show, and I appreciate those. I try to watch those, but if you want to guarantee something gets in front of me, hit me up on Twitter and go, hey, drunk tweet this movie, and I'll probably do it. October, I am going to take off from drunk tweeting uh, for, for Metal Ween. I'm going to focus on Metal Ween during October. But come November, I'm going to start drunk tweeting the Fast and the Furious franchise. I, I teased it last time, but this is the next franchise on my list. So uh, the next drunk ranking video, which will probably not be out till like January, but... You know, the next Drunk Ranking video will be Fast and the Furious. Maybe even February. Fuck, there's like ten movies in this franchise. So, yeah, I guess expect Drunk Ranking Fast and the Furious in February? But if you want to keep up with it while I'm doing it, at man underscore presents. That's my Twitter page. I drunk tweet these movies. Man, I, I still have one Guinness left. I didn't quite make it to the end of this four-pack of Guinness, but whatever. Three Guinness in 
an hour and 20 minutes. That's how long it's taken me to record this. That's pretty good. Until then, um, I love you. Have a nice day. Well, I come from the land of the Irish Spring. Dublin's the place where I learn my thing from my Emerald Isle to your place in the hood. I'm a man in green, come to do no good. Up in the hood, come to do no good. I'm so bad, I'm good.